because we want to prevent the abnormal growth of the eye uh, in emotropic children, you would think we would simply expose them to myopic retinal defocus and that would slow their eye growth. And in fact, that's um, one of the bases of many of the myopia control methods actually that are employed, the optical methods anyway. There's more to it than this though. Uh, <coughs> This process, this emetrophization process, is present in all animals that have been examined, from fish to monkeys. Uh, and the Im most important, or the most interesting thing about it, is that it's a local within-eye process. So it's present even uh, in a chick, even, after you, even if you cut the optic nerve so that no information can go to the brain, the eye will still control its growth and respond to defocus. And so whatever it is that's controlling the eye's growth is actually within the eye itself. It's not nothing to do with the brain at all. And even more remarkable, if you defocus part of the uh, visual field here, so if you def put a defocusing lens just in this half the visual field, then the eye expands on one side of the eye and not the other. <coughs> so the, basically the story is that there's a retinal defocus, it causes changes to choroidal thickness, which then leads to scleral re remodeling, remodeling of the sclera at the back of the eye, and typically local expansion to hyperopic defocus. And the opposite to myopic defocus. I think my device has packed up. Could we have the next slide, please? Thank you. Now, as optometrists, we typically uh, correct for foveal vision uh, so that the image plane, we put lenses in front of the eye so that the image plane at the fovea is moved, let's say, in a myopic eye to from in front of the retina to on the retina at the fovea. But of course, actually, much more is going on than that. Um, actually, it's an image plane that is not just at the fovea, and it can have all sorts of shapes. And what I've shown down here at the bottom, this is uh, uncorrected myopia at the top uh, with the image plane anterior to the retina. And then when we push that back with lenses, correcting lenses, so that the uh, person can see 6-6, six, six, then we don't really know what the rest of the image plane is doing because we don't typically look at what the status of off-axis refraction is. And it can be that it creates myopic retinal relative peripheral refraction. That's one. In other words, the image, the, the image shell is so curved that we have myopic defocus in the periphery, or it could lie exactly on the retina, and two, or we could have hyperopic retinal peripheral refraction, relative peripheral refraction. Now you can see that this might play a, an important role in either preventing m further myopia progression or actually causing more myopia progression. Because if the eye expands in the periphery to hyperopic retinal defocus, then even if we've got the fovea corrected, we may actually be creating hyperopic defocus in the periphery and encouraging uh, myopia progression. And the opposite, of course, would be that if we happen to be in situation number one, maybe we're actually inhibiting myopia progression if we can get our image shell to be, uh, to be that, that sort of a shape. Okay, so uh, many of you will may, may fit, fit orthokeratology lenses, and so this will be uh, rather simplistic if you do, but uh, overnight orth orthokeratology is basically corneal molding with lenses that are worn overnight. Um, and on the left there, there's an image, there's a kind of picture, picture of what's happening. The lens is shaped so that it flattens the central part of the cornea and steepens the mid-periphery. And so flattening the central part corrects on, on axis refractive error. Uh, and the extra plus power in the mid periphery actually creates a uh, myopic defocus in the periphery, just what we might want to prevent myopia progression. Now there's, there's, a, um, there's a, um, a talk later on in the uh, session by um, I 
remember his name. It's terrible, isn't it? As you get older and your hair gets grayer, people's names just escape you. I'm sorry, anyway. I know he's from Spain and he's a, he's a uh, very keen trekker. And he's just been taken advantage of uh, trekking in, <laughs> but I still can't remember his name, so I'll have to move on. Anyway, he's going to tell you more about how to fit orthokeratology lenses, and I'm not going to talk about them anymore, apart from the fact that there's a lot of evidence that... Oh, dear. That it slows myopia progression. Now, here are a whole lot of studies uh, and a, and a meta-analysis at the bottom, um, which shows basically that, that orthokeratology slows myopia progression by about 45%. That's not going to stem the huge uh, epidemic of myopia, but it's going to go a long way to help prevent people becoming myopic. So we have orthokeratology as a standard method of slowing myopia progression, and that's really all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about multifocal soft contact lenses. Uh, we designed this lens in Auckland some, some time ago, a PhD student of mine called Nicola Anstis, and it basically creates, it's designed to create myopic defocus simultaneously with a clear retinal image. And the children wear them, and when they look in the distance, they get myopic defocus, and when they look a little bit near, they also get myopic defocus because they accommodate with these lenses. So these are not um, standard uh, bifocal, concentric bifocal simultaneous vision lenses as such. We've done a couple of studies, and so have other people, and, and we find that they slow myopia progression by about 37%, and they slow eye elongation by about 49%, and the difference between those two is basically experimental error. Other people have looked at multifocal soft contact lenses, and they seem to slow myopia progression uh, by a similar degree. Uh, and quite recently, <coughs> there's been a three-year double-mask multicenter uh, randomized controlled trial of Mice, these MySight lenses, as they're called, which are commercially available now. And I'm just going to very quickly go through this. So this is a multi-center uh, trial in a variety of countries. Measures were made every six months of the children's progression, and about 108 children uh, completed the three-year final visit. Uh, they were aged between 8 and 12 years. They had a spherical equivalent refraction, in other words, a myopia of about minus... 0.75 or to minus 4, lower stigmatism, etc., normal uh, acuity, and they made cyclopedic autorefraction measures of refraction, and they measured axial length as well of the eye. It was a double, uh, sorry, this is the baseline characteristics to show that the uh, control group, which wore uh, daily disposable ProClear one-day lenses, had the same age, the same basic refraction, the same details uh, as the experimental group, the MySight one day group. Uh, the children were masked to the lenses that they were wearing, so they came in unlabeled um, things. Typically, the uh, mean wear time was about 10 hours per day, average of the minimum time was 10 hours a day, but that on average, they wore the lenses 12 hours a day, which is quite a long time for children. And the minimum was that they wore them six days a week, and most of the children wore them for <coughs> about seven days a week. And this is basically the, the, the effect. Um, the red uh, line and the red symbols represent the control group. So on the left, they progressed a reasonable amount over the uh, 36 months. We'll just go to the three-year stage for the moment, um, whereas the blue dotted line shows the progression in the m children wearing my sight lens, which is about, uh, so that, that shows a reduction in um, progression by about 59% in terms of measured by refraction. On the right hand side is the change in axial eye length of the children, the control children in red, and the progression obviously, the elongation is much less in the children wearing uh, my sight lenses and the efficacy is that it reduced axial elongation by about 52%. Uh, so again, we're not 
We're not arresting myopia by any stretch of the imagination. 